What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how to replace the vacuum pump on an R56 Mini Cooper S with an N14 engine. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and stick around. You're going to want to watch this whole video. Alright, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove your intake pipe. Mine's going to be a little bit different than yours. Um, I've showed you a bunch of times how to do this, so I'm just going to do it real quick. I'm going to pop this, uh, this tab off for the this right here. This tab, I don't need to take off, but you do. So you're just going to push in on the bottom like I've showed you in other videos. Pull that up. There's a screw right here. You're going to loosen it. And there's a screw right here that you're going to loosen. It's the two bands that hold the, uh, your, line, your hose on. You're going to take those. And then for me... I'm just going to unhook my vacuum off of my catch can, which you probably don't have. And this will just come out. Like that. Okay, next you're going to want to remove this vacuum line off of your vacuum pump. This is the, what we're replacing right here. The easiest way to do that is take this thing that has all the wires in it. It has a little connector down there where my, where my hand is that you can't really see, but this just slides up and you can just move it out of the way like that and you'll have room. There's only one little tab right here that you press in on and you just want to get a firm grip so you can press in on it and pull up and it comes right out. Okay, next you're going to want to remove this vacuum line off of the, the bottom of your vacuum pump. I'm just going to grab it with my hand. I'm just going to try to pull it off. And it comes right off. Okay, if you look at your new pump, you can see where the bolts are, holes are. They're right here. I have a 8 millimeter socket on that extension that's on the bottom bolt. That'd be this one right here. It's right underneath this where the vacuum line is. It's just an 8 millimeter on an extension. There's no really trick to getting it in there. Let's go ahead and break that loose. Then the other one is right here. Same size, obviously. 8 millimeter. Go ahead and crack that one loose. Out those are slightly loose. I'm just going to go ahead and take them out. I'm going to be using my pen magnet as usual to get these bolts out. like that. Go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom one. You could remove this, your uh, coolant, if you wanted to, but uh, it's not really in the way, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. definitely want to use your ped magnet because if you drop these bolts they're going to be pretty hard to find. For this uh, bottom bolt I actually switched to a quarter inch drive instead of the eighth or the three eighths inch drive that I was using and it's just much easier to get onto the to the screw. And then it comes right out. You could use the quarter inch drive for the whole job most likely. Okay, next you're going to pull your old vacuum pump off of the engine. 
Just gonna wiggle it back and forth. Take some convincing, not a lot. You can feel it getting looser and looser as you're doing this. I'm rocking it up and down and side to side until I can break the seal or whatever that's holding it. It's almost off. comes off my uh, gasket stayed on but it was still intact and it doesn't look like it was leaking but I'm replacing it anyway next you're gonna want to clean up the area where you just took the pump off of I already wiped mine down a little bit off the camera but wipe it down a little bit more just to get any oil that was leaking down from when you pull off the old one Okay, next you're going to want to take your OEM vacuum pump. Don't get a cheap aftermarket one. You want the OEM one. I got this one from Way Motorworks. Um, Detroit Tuned might have them. Speed Tech Motorsports might have them. I would look around. Um, those are the three places I would check. Oh, ECS Tuning probably has them. Okay, I'm going to take some Mobile One motor oil. And I'm going to go ahead and lube up this ring before I put it on. First I'm going to go ahead and let's take these tabs off. A little easier to do that when it's not on the motor. Not much easier. But... Okay, I just put a little bit of oil in the cap. Put my finger in the oil. Just go ahead and lube up the ring. You just want to make sure you get a good seal. Okay, now you're going to want to make sure that these little grooves right here line up with the grooves on your cam. You're going to hold it the way that it came off, line up the holes kind of visually that way, and see if they're about the same. Mine looks like it's pretty close. Then you're just going to Fit it in there. Then slide it in until those grooves work. hard to see because you can't see in there so you got to kind of guess when it's lined up you might have to pull it out a few times just to look and get an idea since it was sitting like that, it's gonna be like that. so yeah I got to rotate mine down just a little bit I'll try again If you rotate it a little bit further than you think you have to, and then rotate your vacuum pump this way, and I'll show you. Rotate this further than you think you have to, rotate your vacuum pump back, and then you can, so you have room to wiggle it around until it pops in, and then you can wiggle it, you can turn it into place from there, and then you just slide it all the way on. Also, you want to make sure your vacuum pump is firmly seated. There shouldn't be any gap between your vacuum pump and your cylinder head. If you do, if you have a gap, oil is going to dump out. 
Okay, at this point, you're going to want to try to line your holes up. And I can see by looking at mine that I'm tilted clockwise too far. So I have to turn it counterclockwise. And you can actually see inside the holes pretty decently. So you just want to get it to where you can see in there. I'm going to put the, the screw on the edge of my um, pin magnet and try to thread it in by hand that way just, to, just so I know that it's, it's in there. It's in the right spot. You might have to rotate it a little bit back and forth until it slides into the actual hole. Okay, and once you can take the pin magnet and just pull it straight out without the screw coming off, you know that your screw is in there. Then just reach in and thread it by hand. If you can't thread it by hand, rotate your vacuum pump a little bit, just so you know you're not cross-threading it. I try to get it in as far as I can by hand before I do it, before I go to the next screw. This one looks like it's going in almost all the way. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. Do the same thing with the bottom screw. Usually I do the hardest screw to get to first, but in this case, the hardest screw to get to is just uh, got a bunch of stuff in the way and it's just in this case it's better to get the easier screw first and that's not gonna work okay plan B I'm gonna hold on my pen magnet sideways like that use my frat my eight millimeter quarter inch drive little extension and I'm gonna put it on there like that just so I can turn it by hand I'm gonna come in underneath the oil feed line between the oil f or the coolant line for the turbo and the um, vacuum for the vacuum pump. Once you have the screw in there, you can go ahead and take that off and you can rotate the vacuum pump a little bit still just to make sure you get the screw threaded. But before you take pressure off the screw in any way, put your, your pin magnet onto the screw, remove your socket and see if the pin magnet pulls the screw out. If it doesn't, like mine doesn't, then you know it's threaded in and you can set the pen magnet aside. Just give myself an extension. I just added an extension on to the edge of this quarter inch drive because I can't get my fingers on it. And I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it by hand. And as long as it's turning really easy, then I'm not afraid that it's cross threading. And it's not. And I'm going to get it as tight as I can by hand. And I'm going to also go to the top one, top bolt, screw, whatever you want to call it. Tighten that one as tight as I can by hand before I tighten it up the rest of the way with the ratchet. Okay, I wasn't able to find any tightening torques in the Bentley manual. So I will look them up later and I'll add them into the description if I can find them. But I normally, I just tighten it up. It's going into a... Aluminum, so don't go too tight. You don't want to strip it and do it in steps. Tighten one a little bit and then go tighten the other one a little bit. 
so that you know it's tightened evenly. And definitely you don't want to strip these. They're only eight millimeters, so I'd be surprised if the tightening torque is more than, you know, 20 pounds, if it's even that. So I just get them snug. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, first I'm gonna put my vacuum line back on. You definitely don't wanna forget that. Place, plug your vacuum back into your wastegate, or back into your vacuum pump, I mean, on the bottom. Definitely a step you don't wanna skip. I'm gonna wait for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook my intake up. Fit it over the cold side of the turbo. Make sure that you get a good seal here. You don't want it to fold inside. There we go. Make sure that side's on. Go ahead and tighten those screw those uh, clamps. These um, don't have to be as as tight as the ones on the. There's no boost going through these, so it doesn't have to be extremely tight like all the other clamps. So you just get them decently snug, so you don't have a vacuum leak. plug in this sensor that you unplugged right here and then plug your vacuum in right here if you unhook that you're gonna want to if you unhook this you're gonna want to put it back on or if you're like me and you unhooked your catch can you're gonna want to put your catch can back on make sure that's sealed if your old vacuum pump there was nothing wrong with it, like there was nothing wrong with mine, I just rebuilt it. I have a video on how to rebuild the vacuum pump. I would suggest you rebuild your old one and keep it. That way if your new one starts leaking, you have one. You're ready, you don't have to wait to order a new one. You can just put your old one back in while you're waiting for the new one to come in that you order because you want to, you know, obviously want to replace it. But uh, I'll put a link in the description to that video. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you like these videos. Uh, check out my other videos and I'll see you in the next one.